Hey guys, Computer welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be reacting matrix. to a new Inside Episode 3, inter introducing us levels into it. All right. Toys. The outfits already look guns. amazing though. What are we waiting for? We can work with that. Hi, I'm Darius Sadegian, studio director at Rocksteady Studios. In our last episode, we talked about how Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League allows players to customize each character and their playstyle through story-driven mechanics. Ma'am, if you gave me five minutes in there, you'd have the world's authority on microtech and all my Bro's inventions. Bro's for his life. Aw, he's so <laughs> sweet. He's not gonna make it. The Suicide Squad gave us the scope, the narrative, gameplay, and Wait, then so does the that idea mean of being able to, to use the that, be able to take this further. It's going to feel completely fresh. In that spirit, we want to deliver totally new content at no cost for those who purchase Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. We're back in business. All right, let's steal this shit. Today, we'll discuss customization options that draw from the full spectrum options. of DC comics. Into it. You'll see emotes, rival taunts, outfits, and more. We wanted to have a game that was very focused, but this time we really want to expand out with being able to dynamically update, add new content, take on feedback, and evolve the game over time. For the first time ever, we'll give you a preview of what's to come after the credits roll on our main story campaign. We always designed the game in a way that we really wanted to be accessible for everyone. And for those players that want to delve even deeper into our gameplay and into our systems, it really is about delivering new places to explore, new worlds to be in, new stories, new characters, and creating unique ways for you to play. Bro, that costume for Harley kind of looked cool, though. I'm gonna give you the content you love. Speaking of, what are you doing, mate? I'm smiling. Let's dive into Suicide Squad Insider Episode 3. I'm hyped for it. Welcome to Task Force X. From the onset, Suicide Squad, being a squad, felt like the right fit for the kind of game that we wanted to make. You get to play with friends, you get to play on your own, but while you are playing on your own, you're playing with the squad, always. Every aspect of our games, we always look at it through the lens of Rocksteady's treatment. And that just doesn't stop at gameplay, that doesn't stop at story. When we're looking at the social features that we've really introduced into Suicide Squad, it has Rocksteady's approach. What do we think players will have fun with? This game has the mechanics to play kind of socially competitively, like none of our games have previously, and it really fits the characters of the squad. With multiplayer, we're leaning into the competition within the squad. That to show off the skills, ship, show off your metal, looks amazing. Bro, Holly just chucked him. The squad are working together under duress. And so it's fun to add in mechanics to encourage the players to behave in the same way. So a lot of the time what you'll actually be doing is trying to get the highest score, which luckily helps you all complete the mission. But the best player in any mission becomes the squad leader in multiplayer for the oh, next mission. Yeah, that's kind of a cool mechanic though. Whoever, whoever gets the highest score in the mission gets to be the squad leader and picks the next mission. That's good. We have leaderboards for solo play, for playing with one friend, two friends, or a four-player squad. Yo, that Harley Quinn skin in the middle, though, that looks kind of cool. Like, that looks so good. You're competing with everyone across the world. Cross-platform, it is the best of the best. Think your hot shit on ties, but you'll call final bread. <laughs> did you see that? Tell me you did. I was like, how do you like that? Bro, I'm telling you, these costumes, though, look so good. Like, look at that costume for Boomerang. There's some really fun incentives for playing together as well as playing competitively. You can use the equipment that other players have equipped on their characters in your squad with the AI playing as the characters. And those players whose bots you use get rewards for you using those bots. And that's a real- Oh, so basically like, even if your friend's not playing with you, you can like add them into your squad and replace the NPC and they'll still go get re the rewards when they log on. Which is kind of, that's a really good gimmick. Really fun feature that I think the players will be incentivized because they'll get something out of it too. 
Один на карте. That's kind of cool, though. That's like a very like when you log on, you see a middle finger on your screen. That's like, like haha, I won type of thing. And does that mean we get to play as Flash as a playable character since he's in Boomerang's costume? I think fans are gonna have a great time with our remote system. Allowing players to kind of communicate in different ways, really in playful ways. Yo, is that Joker or is that just like an emote or something? As Rocksteady, as creators, this was another opportunity for us to really engage with our characters. But what kind of costume is that? Look, all these costumes look so amazing. They did really good on this game. Extend the narrative through the player's choices with a very cinematic eye. Whoa, is that. Did they make Deadshot's costume Arkham Batman? Yo, I might have to rock that outfit if it's free or if I can buy it or not. That outfit looks so cool. It's Arkham Batman, but it's Deadshot. Through the game, we offer many customization options and outfits to the player. You start off in the prison, you get your prison garbs, and then you evolve to the Task Force X outfits. Yeah, right. I was thinking something more fashion forward. The outfit customization in our game is... Uh yeah, I'm telling you, they did really good on these outfits. Like, every outfit I see, they did really good detail on them. Like, it's, I don't see any bad thing about these outfits. Uh, vast, to say the least. Like, look how many outfits there are. With this game, Rocksteady will deliver a full Already story in the game, just launched. Players, including more cinematics than any previous Arkham game. For players who survived the war against Brainiac's forces and want to keep the adventure going, Rocksteady is ready. We very much knew we had a story to tell initially, and then we wanted to carry on uh, feeding into that, and then changing up the gameplay to have a game that was going to evolve through post-launch content. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is going to be one of the most generous, player-friendly, post-launch experiences available. Every season we will have two episodes. Each season there's going to be a different spin on how you play, and will be heavily themed by a DC villain. So there's many, many layers of influence from the DC world on how you play and what you do. The seasonal content gets automatically dropped into the game each episode. Well, we get to, we get to play in Arkham Asylum, or is that like an end game mission? I think it's an end game mission. There's no playable content locked behind a battle pass, and the in-game shop is for cosmetics only. So the in-game shop will be cosmetics only. No weapons, no characters no nothing it's just gonna be all cosmetic that's nice you'll always be able to go back and play the episodic content if you want to come back six months from now that'll always be there this is a totally yeah that's kind of cool you can, even if you miss it you can still play it you want to play when you want the dc universe is massive and in most games you can only see or explore a tiny tiny piece of it but what's really cool about the narrative of kill the justice league is there's almost no limit on where we can go celebrating the fall of the game so that means anything can happen basically in his pursuit anything of can happen to his perfect colo brignac has been experimenting with some of our favorite dc characters dna creating new worlds in alternate realities it's these worlds that we call elseworlds brignac is a genius of 12th level wait is that hit wait hold a little look that we call elsewhere is that hinting mr freeze or Killer Frost or something? Or is it just like a, just another mission? Brainiac is a genius of 12th level intelligence, uh, but he's also trying to rebuild the civilization that he misses and is lost, and there is nothing he won't do to get there. New Kolu will be reborn. He's building a model of the multiverse. Look at this All open world, data. though. I will unlock your full potential to serve me. I saw ha 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 on the wall. Does that mean jo does that mean Joker's coming? I s see. Look, ha ha ha. Does that mean Joker's coming to the game? There's different versions of everybody in different universes, and their timelines have just diverged at some point. 
We've got lots of amazing characters. So does that mean anybody can come in and into the roster at any time? Like they could just add any character? Coming up in seasonal play that I'm really excited for players to meet. And the Elseworld principles gives us lots of flexibility and lots of room to put our own spin on them. We get to play with a bunch of cool shit from alternate universes, and then what? Retire? When season one launches this March, you'll be able to unlock a new playable Who is that? Your squad, the Joker. Oh my god. The Joker is back. Well, I think in a different universe, but he's back, finally. Oh my god. At least buy me dinner first. <laughs> I'm kind of digging his voice though. I mean, it's it's not the Arkham Batman's voice, but I'm kind of digging it though. The original Arkhamverse Joker has been dead for five years, but this is a new Elseworlds twist on the villain. He was part of the suit. Wait, let me see something again. The original Arkhamverse Joker has been dead for five years, but this is a new Elseworlds twist. On he has a prosthetic leg. That, that has no correlation to it in any way, but I just wanted to say that. On the villain. He was part of the Suicide Squad in the Elseworld that he's from, which already shows it. So he's part of the Suicide Squad in a different universe or a different dimension? Yo, that means they could use any character from any universe and just make it up. That is actually insane. Oh my god. But he's slightly more cooperative than the previous Joker we've had. But as you get used to him and actually play to him, you realize he's unhinged in a different way. Not only has he got to figure himself out, but he's figured. Bro, I'm so hyped now. He's going to a game? Does that mean we get to play as him too? Bring out his place in this new world and this new squad. He hadn't reached supervillain status before Brainiac invaded, so, you know, he's still- So he's not a supervillain yet in this other universe, is what he said. A bit less okay. okay, that makes sense. I think we've taken him back to the kind of more vaudeville roots of Joker. He's masking insecurities with traditional Joker behavior. But deep down, he's not sure who he is yet. Lock him up. Oh, making new friends after a move is always tough. As your mission expands deeper into the lore of the DC universe, this new version of the Joker... Yo, I'm sorry for pausing again, but Joker is back, though? Yo... I'm so happy Joker's back. I wonder what Harley's gonna say when he, he see when she sees Joker though. Like, will it, is the interaction gonna be weird or something? It will join your fight with his unique combat traversal and weaponry. His traversal is all based around a rocket-powered umbrella, which he can blast himself into the air and then uses that to glide around. That's kind of a cool traversal, like. That's kind of cool to wrestle. I kind of, I feel like I've seen that And then you can actually flip that down to grind the long buildings, knocking enemies out of the way. And the kind of frantic vertical and horizontal energy that he has means you've always got to be moving and always attacking the enemies. Wait, I gotta go back. You can slide on the ground. And the kind of frantic. Are those, are those are fireworks coming out of his umbrella? That's cool. Vertical and horizontal energy that he has means you've always got to be moving and always attacking the enemies. His finishes are kind of look fire. The Joker is only the first of the new squad recruits you could meet through the ongoing additions to our game. Over time, we can build up a library of. So he is playable. Oh my god, he is playable. Oh my god. I can't wait for this game to come out, yo. Characters that DC fans might not have expected to see in a video GCPD? Game, like a regular comic book release. I look forward to when the next issue's coming out. And in the same way, I hope people will look forward to the next episode from us. Whatever it is, I'm down. New environments, new characters, missions, challenges, gear, and more. All of this free... Did you just say new missions? Like, there's gonna be new missions in general outside of the story? Oh my god. Yo. I am so hyped for this game to come out finally. Only, like, 8 days if you have the deluxe version and 10 days if you have the regular version. Content comes for players. Like, this game is already so 
far but so close from a launch and we're already getting all this information like this is why i love wb games to own the game we can't wait for you to see what the future holds with elseworlds the possibilities are endless how do you like that thanks for watching this series we hope you'll join us for suicide squad kill the justice league a third person action shooter where some of the wildest villains of dc comics join forces to save the world from its greatest heroes <laughs> no, no, that's mental. We're not doing that. God help us. <laughs> yeah. I think players are going to be surprised about the depth to which they can craft the character. It comes back to player choice and player freedom. Everything from melee strikes into gunplay, which you could then go into a traversal attack. All of the combat moves flow seamlessly into another. The squad can be garish, they can be loud and playing together with your friends in a multiplayer space is a really unique experience that you can't get anywhere else. What we've done with the Suicide Squad is to really expand those experiences. Not only just one character this time around, we've done it with four and we plan to do it with more. Well, this brings back memories of my old Suicide Squad. Whether you're in for the main story. So his the, so when we meet Joker, it's probably gonna be in March because they're not gonna release a character right as the game releases. So when he releases, is he gonna have his own separate story or something? Like, his only story mission to get his character? Or exploring what lies beyond, Rocksteady Studios is here to support our players while delivering exciting new experiences. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you at launch February 2nd, 2024. Okay, I need to go back to some things real quick. I need to go back. So right here. Character for your squad. The Joker. So... First things I want to say is his outfit looks really, really, really good. They did a really good job on his outfit. And I hope, what if these DLC characters have his, their own outfits later down on the line? Like, this is not his only outfit. That's going to be, that's going to be really, really insane if they actually make DLC characters their own outfit. Like, different outfits. At least buy me dinner. And that looks like a battle ring. Like, at the, on his belt. Like a little batarang or whatever. First. <laughs> the original Arkhamverse Joker has been dead for five years, but this is a new... See, dead after five years, that means this is just a different Joker. New Elseworlds twist on the villain. And also a prosthetic leg again. Is that, is that gonna... This is gonna be... It's like a flail. Like his melee weapon. He was part of the Suicide Squad in the Elseworld that he's from, which already shows that he's slightly more cooperative than the previous Joker we've had. But as you get used to him and actually play to him, you realize he's... Also, I want to talk about the costumes too. Like, are there going to be like seasonal costumes? Like, the Battle Pass has these? The outfit... And then, this is going to be ones you can unlock in general. Customization in our game. See? Wait. The outfit customization in our game. That Deadshot one though looks insane. The Harley Quinn one looks insane. This one looks good. Game is this is the boring one I couldn't see. Like there's so much costumes and variety you could do. With this game, Rocksteady will deliver a full story-driven campaign to players, including more cinematics than any previous arc. Also, this I think is cool. Like you can bring your your care, your other NPC, your teammates into different missions with you, and they still get the rewards after they're all flying, which is amazing. Right with all. We have leaderboards for solo play, for playing with one friend, two friends. Cross platform, it is the cross plat. Did you just say cross platform? Does that mean PC and Xbox can play together? With everyone across the world, cross platform. He did. That means PC and Xbox maybe might play it together. Wow. Well, I'ma go. I hope y'all, I'ma see y'all in the next episode, in the next video. I'ma play the game when it comes out on February 2nd. I'll see y'all there. Make sure to like and subscribe.